What nice guys do is what they suffer with is not that they're too nice or anything. It's just that they have incredibly weak boundaries when it comes to women. They simply are not actually not just women. It, it could be anybody. What they do is they lack a, a lot of masculinity. And what they do is they blame the fact that they're so nice as to why they can't get women. But it's not about being nice. It's about a lack of masculinity. And one of the best ways to establish masculinity is placing boundaries, particularly with women. When you don't like a behavior, you don't roll over and allow allow it to continue and then give her more in order to, for you to get her, you set a boundary and you have a willingness to walk away. Nice guys, what happens is they don't like to exert their boundaries and they don't have a willingness to walk away. So what ends up happening is a nice nature becomes a reason for resentment because women don't like it. They actually feel angry when you're too nice to them because then they don't feel protected. They feel like you're weak. If you let a woman make all the decisions for you, she'll slowly start to hate you because she'll feel like she has to raise you and she'll lose respect for you. So you're better. What we truly want is not a man that just is like chaotic. We just want a man who we can trust makes good decisions. He's not the nice guy. He's the one that we'll submit to. But the one that doesn't trust his own decision making and we have to do it and he comes across as being nice, essentially he's seen as weak. Yeah. I, overly pliable yeah. is the term that but I think hard. about. it's Could you like, how do you as a man make sure that you're nice and not weak? Like it must be difficult because in this day and age, if you try and be like a bit more assertive, that I'm guessing it gets a lot of pushback. It's, it's hard for a man. How do, uh, how do I don't know. I think you'd be surprised. I think that, you know, the line of acceptable behavior is way wider than most people think, mm -hmm. right? You know, you can be assertive in a powerful, reassuring way without being a tyrant. Right. It's pretty it's pretty easy to achieve. Yeah. Right. I, I I don't think that it's that hard. But I also understand that a lot of people don't have a massive amount of first hand experience. Yeah. They they're spending all of their time learning about things through the internet. Mm. They don't actually have the you need to be skillful and nimble, right? Yeah. To be able to it's flirting and dealing with even the same sex, let alone the opposite sex, is like a delicate balance, right? It's a bit of a dance. It's a bit of yeah. teasing. Is it too far? Is it too much? Like, you know, it's it requires experience and most people don't have the opportunity to develop And that. it's really easy to have the willingness to walk away when you're somebody that has a lot of alternatives and it doesn't just mean other women. It could be a lifestyle that is alternative to being settled down. But when you're somebody that doesn't have many alternatives, the willingness to walk away decreases. So I do understand it's very difficult for men to have that. But without the willingness to walk away, she'll look for a man that does have the willingness to walk away. She'll look for a man that does have boundaries because we need them as women. It's strange. And I also understand that it must be ruthless to think, oh, well, I would really like a nice guy. Maybe your last relationship was with some dude that was in very avoidant, mm -hmm. uh, like masculine in a non-supporting way. Yeah. And you think, okay, well, I'll, I'll go for a nice guy. I'll go for a guy that's a bit more pliable and a, a lot more agreeable. And then if what you're saying is true and you end up resenting them, mm -hmm. you go... Oh, that that wasn't what I wanted either. So yeah. it must be difficult. It must be difficult for a girl. Essentially, what we truly want is a man whose decision making on his own is one that we can naturally submit to. What I mean by that is if I have to tell you to do this, that and the other and you listen to me, I don't respect you anymore. Because if I had to tell you and you listen to me and I'm better than you at making decisions, I'm more powerful than you, I don't feel protected. You simply have to be a man that could literally take a girl by her hand and lead her into uh, whatever lifestyle you is, but she feels safe in that knowledge. But if you're the type of guy is like second guessing himself if you're second guessing yourself and then submitting to me it's a, we automatically don't find that attractive we that can't it. be the same for every girl though right there must be a spectrum of women it, it, it works well for women who are planning to manipulate you so the women that are planning to manipulate and planning to use a man, they love this guy without boundaries. The one that the girl that genuinely wants to have a connection with you, build a family with you, have a network with you, she actually wants you to have a backbone and wants you to have an opinion. The one that's planning to not stick around too long, the one that's planning to be with, keep in touch with another guy, the guy that the girl that wants an alimony as soon as the kids arrive, that's the one that wants you to be this people pleaser, bend over backwards, do everything I say. Yeah. What about people pleasers more generally on the girl's side and on the guy's side? Well, I guess they would be a, a similar match. But what I happen with with two people pleasers, like where the woman is just a nice girl and the guys are just a nice guy, they don't create an authentic connection because neither of them are giving each other the glue or the vulnerability to attach. One saying, I'll just do what you want. The other one's, oh, okay, I'll just do what you want. We don't know each other. We're just a comfort blanket. But one of them at least has to be a bit disagreeable to create that connection, give you that kind of glue to attach to. So unfortunately, 
know, two people pleasers don't usually end up together. Did you watch Succession? No, I didn't. Okay, yeah. so it's pretty cool. It's this series on HBO, mm -hmm. and I think it's really early on, maybe the one of the first few episodes in the first yeah. season. And this tyrannical father is pointing at his only daughter who's just got married to a guy who's very pliable, mm -hmm. at least for the first few seasons, unbelievably pliable, mm -hmm. right? Um, he is a bit of a social climber, the, the potential future husband, bit of yeah. a social climber. He kind of wants to be a part of the crew, so to speak. Uh, and he says the dad is just fucking going around the room like, this is something I don't like about you, and this mm -hmm. is something I don't like about you. And he points at Shiv, the daughter, and he says, you married a man that's beneath you because you're terrified of being betrayed. Aww. Fucking painful. Very but true. in that moment, I saw something that's very true. You know, the people that are scared of losing their partner, yeah. a lot of the time will date down, aggressively date down, yeah. because they know that they're so far ahead of what that partner would typically be in a relationship yeah. with. With Shiv, it's largely resources and money and access, which mm. is kind of strange because the dynamics flipped typically from the yeah. way it would be. But um, yeah, that just, that really, and, and it's it, like one of the most brutal insults like it insults both of them at the same time with one thing <laughs> yeah. you married a man that's beneath you because you're terrified of being betrayed and it's very true a lot of women and men um uh, use that strategy but the problem is you almost guarantee the divorce if i marry someone beneath me to prevent him cheating on me that doesn't change the other aspect that is required for a healthy relationship which is bringing equal value to each other's life and when one feels like they are married beneath uh, below it, it doesn't work out either the true connection comes when you both bring equal value and you don't and you choose to be with each other rather than you know he can't do any better or she can't do any better eventually that catches up because a person with low self-esteem who feels like they've you know been punching eventually starts to get so much low self-esteem that they might seek external validation so they might be more likely to cheat or more likely to dis uh, to betray you because at some point they can feel that you know they know that you know that you're above them and that low self-esteem can create a desire wow. to connect outside so unfortunately there isn't really a cure to that other than true connection but one thing I would say about people pleasing they say that it's linked to an absent father they say that people what has it, having a, um, a father figure does is that rough and tumble kind of play and that harsh criticism gets you in the habit of speaking truth even if it's not the nicest thing to do whereas the absence of that can actually make you think that you're going to offend because it's easy to offend mum it's harder to offend dad so when you get in, used to that rough and tumble kind of verbal um, altercations with father others, it prepares you for the real world of where you are less sensitive and more likely to be truthful rather than people pleasing. What about the opposite then? What about treat them mean, keep them keen as opposed to people pleasing? Um, again, another tactic um, that's very much advocated in the current dating, but is again counterproductive because the moment you treat people mean, you filter out healthy people. Healthy people don't stick around to be treated badly. That doesn't go in line with their template of relationships. Healthy people have a template of relationship that requires mutual respect. Now, when they're with somebody who treats them mean, they filter themselves out. They understand they might work on it for a little bit, but they recognize where they're not welcome. Um, when you're treating them mean, keeping them keen, you're attaching to somebody that has incredibly low self-esteem, who expects to be treated like this, who will then, when you start, when you stop playing that game and actually want to commit to that person or particularly that girl, she'll become volatile. She'll self-sabotage because she's so used to being treated mean. Commitment doesn't actually feel good. It feels unfamiliar. So she'll recreate some chaos in order to create the separation because treating them mean, keeping them keen doesn't work, unfortunately. Do you think men and women can be friends? Yes, I do. Do you think they can be friends? I've seen it go both ways. Uh -huh. More times than not, it seems to mess up. <laughs> but yeah. I, it's it's not impossible. I've got a number of friends who have managed to do that totally platonically. Mm -hmm. Do you have female friends? Do I have female <laughs> friends? I do. I do have some. Yeah, yeah, but they're mostly kind of from the industry, from podcasting. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, Michaela Peterson's probably one of my closest friends on the planet. That's great. Um. Aww. Yeah, so it's some, but, it's, but it's it's. I think it's tough. I think it's tough. What like, do you think makes it tough about having female Well, friendships? just that the line between what you have and what you're familiar with when it comes to guys and girls and the line of romantic desirability is pretty fine. Mm -hmm. And it only needs to be confused by one party right. for, the for the friendship to break down, mm -hmm. right? 
it doesn't need both people to want it to happen. If both people want it to happen, the friendship turns into a relationship. Yeah. If one person wants it to happen, the friendship's no longer a friendship. You're right. So right? it's just... You've got a lot of different ways. And then let's forget that. Let's say that one of either people gets into a relationship with someone that isn't in the friendship. Yeah. Then there's like two more people that could have a problem. You yeah. can't see that person anymore. Yeah. I don't like it when you go around her house. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when you spend time with him. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different ways that yeah. this can go wrong i understand and one thing i would like to point out about that because men can never understand why females can have male friends uh, but we tend to believe that we can have male friends and the reason why we kind of think like this is because we would rather have somebody a, f a friend who secretly loves us than a female friend that secretly hates us and you guys don't have to experience that usually when men don't like each other they separate from each other women when they don't like each other they'll make reservations together and they'll still go on holidays together and they'll still keep in each other's lives. So when we crave male friendships, it's because you don't know the pain, well, not necessarily pain, that sounds a bit exaggerated, but the difficulty in finding good female friendships that are not as easy for us. For men, if they play a sport together, they can pretty much be friends. For us, you can do everything right with a female friendship. All it takes is, uh, you know, a birthday gone wrong or a boyfriend that they don't like or a boyfriend that they both like. Um, and the entire friendship is destroyed. And there's a safety in a male friendship that we can't find in female friendships because it's very difficult to find women that are totally not threatened by you in any way shape or form by other women and that's even when you're I'm not saying just when you're attractive even when you're less attractive you still have friends similar level of attractiveness so there is a form of threat even there uh, so that's the first thing I think women can why women can have better friendships with men the other thing is I just think if you are a, a woman or a man of value beyond your sexual kind of um, prowess, if you've got something other to offer isn't it natural Natural that men, women, old, young, everybody's going to gravitate towards you and want to be around you. I just think it's natural. It's a natural consequence of being a valuable person mm. is that people gravitate towards you. In the male and female form, they will gravitate towards you. So to kind of have an arbitrary rule that you can't have male and can't have female, it would only work if your personality is limited. If you have a limited personality, if I'm a girl that only talks about hair and makeup, of course I can only have female friends. But if I'm a woman that can have a lot of different types of conversations, it's natural to be able to connect with different types of people. There's two things that makes me think about. First, I had the director of relationship science from Hinge, Logan Uri, on the oh, show okay. about uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, and she taught me about um, people confuse spark in the beginning of a relationship for something special mm. without realizing that some people are just sparky to everyone. Yes. And that was a really interesting insight. And it's kind of like what you're talking yeah. about here, right? That if you're somebody that's interesting and trustworthy and of high value in the world people are just going to gravitate toward you because you're a nice person to know yeah you're useful you're cool you're fun to be around you're interesting right, right? so there are certain people who just suck others in yeah. right now the second thing have you heard of the over perception and under perception bias of attraction mm -hmm. so this is really interesting it's out of evolutionary psychology so mm -hmm. men over perceive the level of attraction that they believe women have toward them yeah. and women underperceive perceive mm -hmm. the level of attraction that men have toward them. Yeah. It's a, referred to as a failure of cross-sex mind yeah. reading. And this shows up very reliably in the data. David yeah. Buss put this out in mm -hmm. Bad Men or Men Behaving Badly, depending yeah. on which country you're in. This is why a boss or a coworker will maybe make a, an ungainly move, mm -hmm. apart from like the creeps like Harvey Weinstein and stuff mm -hmm. like that, make an ungainly move because they will believe that, oh yeah, you know, her eyes always linger on me. She yeah. always makes it to the water cooler at the same time that I do. She's yeah. always in the, the, the printing her stuff in the cupboard the yeah. same time that I do as well. Maybe I should try and ask her out. Yeah. It is much more useful for men to have a smoke alarm that goes off a lot yeah. and is wrong a lot, but is right every so often. Right. Because the price of missing a potential signal is really high yeah and the cost <laughs> of noticing a signal that wasn't there is essentially zero yeah right the reverse for women mm -hmm. in speed dating they did this they put men and women down at a speed dating event asked both of them how attracted were you to the other one mm -hmm. women regularly rated that they were way less attracted to the man than the man thought <laughs> and the reverse true too yeah. This is the failure of cross-sex mind reading, and mm -hmm. it explains so much about the world that men and women inhabit. 
because we don't inhabit the same world. Mm -hmm. I don't see my interaction with you the same way that you see your interaction with me. Mm -hmm. And this reliably smeared across an entire population mm -hmm. is why men and women don't understand each other because we do not have the same brains and we don't see the world in the same way. You know, but when I do deal with uh, clients who are, you know, men who are very lonely and um, who struggle with female connection, I do ask them, do you have any female friends? And the answer is invariably no. And I always say that you need them. And they're like, no, we shouldn't be friends. Blah, blah, blah. Men and women can't be friends. And I said, but they're training ground for women in the real world. Because when you have female friends, they teach you what things upset women, what things upset, uh, make them happy, what they mean by when they text slowly, when they text fast, when they don't text at all. They teach you so much that you can't learn from women directly. Because when a woman is in love with a man, she can't help but play stupid games because it's part of a protection strategy. So what she'll do is say she's done when she's not done or say she doesn't want to sleep with you when she does mm. want to sleep with you. She'll say the opposite of what she truly means. But having female friends helps you understand the human psychology behind a woman in a way that experience, direct experience with them won't. So that's why I actually say, because so many of my male friends will be like, this girl just did that. And I'm like, oh, that means she wants you to do da da da. And you translate You can it, see the code, yeah, not the matrix. The code because we speak in code. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, well, I, so I, Destiny who you should speak to at some point because I think who you guys... Who I think is great, by the way. Destiny's fas fascinating dude. I think dude. is fantastic. Very, very, yeah. very, very big fan of Destiny. Yeah. He said that someone asked him what the best piece of dating advice he is he, he could give to guys. And he says, during high school, have lots of female friends. Yeah. He apparently just hung with this big group of guys and girls and had tons of female friends and did exactly what you said. We'll get back to talking to Sadia in one minute, but first I need to tell you about Factor. If you are too busy this autumn to cook, but still want to make sure that you're eating well, Factor is the solution. With Factor, you can skip the extra trip to the grocery store, plus all of the chopping and prepping and cleaning up while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat, and enjoy. And right now their autumn menu has some absolute bangers like a cranberry pecan chicken and an apple Dijon pork chop. Or if like me you're struggling to hit your protein goals you can try their protein plus meals with 30 grams or more of protein per serving. I cannot tell you how big of a life hack it is to only be two minutes away from a 30 gram of protein meal at all times. Right now you can get 50% off by heading to the link in the description below or going to factormeals.com slash MW50 and using the code MW50 at checkout. That's factormeals.com slash MW50 and MW50 at checkout. Female friends for guys are like low stakes test relationships. Absolutely. I, I, growing up, all my friends were men and I still have a, a really large circle of male friends. My birthdays, every year, my birthday, if there's a table like this, 80% of them will be my male Is friends. Is that not an Islam thing though, rather than like a friend thing? As in like why? That you've just, in as far as I'm aware, the typical... Muslim family yeah. would have like the fucking uncles are over and all of the rest of <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, we do have a big male dominance in our in our world. Uh, technically, we shouldn't really be interacting uh, opposite genders. I know I shouldn't be, but I do. I'll haram. be honest. I haram. <laughs> so I do, and I have a huge. And then, but the thing is, what it meant is, it. Uh, I have a plethora of understanding about the male psyche that I could never get from a textbook. A lot of people will say to me when it comes to my content online, they say you have a very unique perspective. How how do you know this? And I said, honestly, it's because I have so many males around me and I have an interest in them. So I'll ask loads and loads of questions. I'll understand their relationships. I meet their girlfriends and I understand. So it gives me up-to-date data about what's going on with men. And But I am, I am biased because what happens is I naturally only know men who are confident, but I don't know what the psychology as much of the guy that's stuck in his mom's basement and addicted to pornography. And I think I'm learning that by how triggered they get by certain conversations online. So I just think it, like Destiny said, it definitely does give you a framework of understanding the male brain that you can't get through other women. That would be an unbelievably unpopular piece of advice to give to a lot of the manosphere to yeah. say that one of the best things you could do would be to be friends with women so that it's a low stakes.